Greetings, Earthlings! Welcome back to 7th Street. Did you know that one out of three people say that they have an immense fear of spiders? I guess it's not all that surprising. I mean, I don't think I know anyone who really likes to be around spiders. I mean, I don't have like some big giant problem with them, but I definitely don't want one on me. Spiders are fascinating though. I especially like the YouTuber Exotic Slayer. I love watching his videos of him feeding his tarantulas, but uh, I'd never own one. Anyway, with this introduction running a lot longer than I expected, I thought that we would take a look at one of horror's more underappreciated subgenres, the killer spider movie. See, the only existing specimen of a spider, bigger than a human, for shocking, skin-crawling excitement, meet face to face. 50 creeping tons of black spiders as tall as trees. Number five, Kingdom of the... Number four, Curse of the Black Widow. Yes, I know there are probably a lot of scoffing and giggling going on right now, but I am serious. I have really grown to enjoy this little made-for-TV movie of the week, directed by the legendary Dan Curtis, who's probably best known for his Trilogy of Terror and the Kolchak the Night Stalker sequel, The Night Strangler. And you know what? This, interestingly enough, is exactly what Curse of the Black Widow feels like. Another Kolchak the Night Stalker film. That's probably why I like it so much. Kolchak the Night Stalker is one of my favorite television shows and is criminally underrated. The movies and the show follow a reporter who hunts down different horrific creatures of the night. Curse of the Black Widow is about a private investigator who's hot on the trail of a mysterious killer that murders men and then encases them in a silk cocoon. Hmm wonder what that could be. Eventually, the investigator discovers that the killer is a woman who was bitten by a black widow as a child and now sports a red hourglass mark, I guess. Oh, and every now and again, she transforms into a huge spider puppet. I will admit, the first time I watched this one, I wasn't the biggest fan. I was slightly disappointed by the lack of spider puppets and the overuse of the monster's POV. But the more I watch it, the more I like it. The movie is just absurd fun. I love the fact that the monster spider has the same roar as the kaiju Rodan. <laughs> I love the fact that you can clearly tell when they're using a stunt double. And I love the goofy twist ending that you can see from a mile away. I didn't come here to talk. I came here to eat. Okay. Shall we? The climax of this film is handled quite well, and you do get a chance to appreciate its primitive special effects. The goofy mystery is also compelling enough, the twin aspect at least keeps you guessing throughout the film. My only thing with this movie is, I think the story would have done a lot better and been a lot more exciting as a 30 minute episode of Kolchak the Night Stalker, but I digress. Curse of the Black Widow, man, check it out. Number three, Arachnid. Oh my. What a magnificent predator. 
Oh boy, the golden age of the Sci-Fi Channel original movie. Spanning from about 1997 to about 2005, the Sci-Fi Channel actually played rather good movies. I know that that's pretty hard to imagine now with the fact that the entire channel is polluted by a non-stop shitty CGI fest, but for a while, every single movie they picked as their movie of the week was pretty fantastic. I saw some of my favorite childhood monster movies during this period. Blood Surf, Dino Croc, Mosquito, and one of my favorite spider movies, Arachnid. <laughs> Arachnid is produced by Brian Usna, who's best known for his body horror film Society, but he also produced and directed a number of genre classics like Beyond Reanimator and Return of the Living Dead 3. That should give you a pretty good idea of the type of monster movie this is going to be. The movie opens with a stealth fighter pilot colliding with a translucent UFO over a tropical island in the South Pacific. Somehow managing to survive, the pilot stumbles upon the alien wreckage where he comes face to face with a being from another world that is just before a giant alien spider takes them both out. Within the first two minutes, this movie has gone completely off the rails, setting up a fantastical concept. But believe it or not, the movie reels itself back in, centering around the pilot's sister, who teams up with a group of doctors, mercenaries, and scientists to venture to the island, where they of course run into the giant alien spider who has them all for lunch. The movie is incredibly action-packed and fast-paced with lots of gore and blaring machine guns. My favorite thing about this movie is how gross it is, and that's not just in terms of the gore. The spider puppet is extremely well made for the budget I mean, just look at this thing. Leon! That spider really gives you the creepy crawly vibe, doesn't it? Wouldn't it be cool to see this thing burst out of a human skin? Even the environment of the hot, humid jungle just kind of gives me this icky feeling when I watch it. This can all be attributed to Brian Yuzna, no doubt, who's proven himself a master of gross-out body horror. I can't recommend this one enough. I hate spiders. Number two, Tarantula. A blunder that transformed a tiny insect into the hundred-foot spider that was now ravaging the panic-stricken countryside. Arguably the best Silver Age sci-fi movie ever made. Yes, I will say that again. Arguably the best Silver Age sci-fi movie ever made. The only other one I can really think of might be them. 1955's Tarantula is a Universal Pictures epic about a mad scientist somewhere in the middle of the Arizona desert who accidentally unleashes a rapidly growing monstrous tarantula upon the town. It's now up to the local town doctor to save the day. When I saw the body, I, I thought it was acromegalia, but that's not possible. Acromagalia. Yeah, it's kind of strange. John Agar just sort of wanders around as a local physician, barking orders at the police and the military, telling them what to do and where to go in order to combat the spider. I understand that he's the main character, but I can't help but feel like this could have been an easy fix. Not once in the movie do we see him actually doing doctor things, really. He could have just as easily been the town sheriff. If anything a man hates is to be told he's wrong when he knows he's right. <laughs> I knew Dima had burned your tail. <laughs> Listen, I'm just a country doctor, but I know what I know. Anyway, the highlight of this film is the second act non-stop giant spider rampage through the countryside. Look at these effects. They're pretty darn well done, and at times it's actually kind of creepy. I mean, after all, we are looking at a real tarantula. Now, of course, this is a pretty common effect especially during the 1950s and 60s, using a real animal with either miniatures or somehow matting it into the scene. But Tarantula is maybe the best example of this technique. 
I'm not exactly sure, but I think that it's the high contrast black and white that blends the seams of this effect so well. You actually have to search the image to point out its minor flaws, which is a testament to Universal's work here. Even the few shots with giant spider puppet legs are spliced in rather nicely. A couple of the film highlights include the dynamite roadblock, the mansion destruction scene, and the end of the movie, which is pretty cool, but just so goddamn abrupt. After trying to blow up the spider with dynamite and shooting him with machine guns, the military calls in an airstrike and it works. Movie over. Oh, and apparently this is Clint Eastwood's second role in a movie ever playing a jet pilot, so there's that. Dropping napalm, follow an order. The movie is overall extremely entertaining and one of the best examples of the monster on the loose genre. Number one, arachnophobia. He came across one of the offending spiders a couple hours ago. Might you have brought it with you? Actually, it's probably still in the bottom of my shoe. Yeah, I mean, obviously, arachnophobia is going to take the number one spot. Not only is it the most popular spider movie, but it's clearly the most well-made and, frankly, the creepiest. Every time I watch this movie, I spend the rest of the night nervously scanning the floors for spiders and freaking out at the slightest touch from anything resembling a creepy crawly. Oh! The movie is just so damn effective in its ability to make you uneasy. Arachnophobia stars Jeff Daniels and John Goodman and was directed by Frank Marshall, which would explain why the movie feels so much like a Spielberg film, as Frank Marshall was the co-founder of Amblin Entertainment. Rock and roll. The movie begins with a team of biologists locating a new species of highly venomous spider in the Amazon rainforest. The spider is then inadvertently shipped back back to a small town in North America where it breeds with a common house spider. I've been really trying. Causing a major infestation that begins to kill the local population. Part of what I find so eerie about this movie is the fact that the pseudoscience here is reasonably plausible and the spiders are basically just poisonous crossbreeds of ordinary looking house spiders. They're no more and no less aggressive than ordinary spiders, there's just a ton of them. This is what makes the movie so unnerving. The spiders look exactly like the spiders you see in your house all the time, and the few times of year that you wake up with an itchy spider bite, odds are it came from something that looked exactly like this. Everybody just get up very... Slowly. Thank God this movie was made in the 90s, and the studio used for the most part real spiders and some really well-made puppets, because nowadays this movie would obviously be entirely CGI, and it wouldn't have nearly the same effect. I saw this movie at a really young age. Like I said, it feels a lot like a Spielberg film at times, and it's pretty family-friendly, which is something that I find so incredible about Arachnophobia. It's a PG film that to this very day day still causes me to check my shoes before I put them on, check the shower for spiders before I get naked, and I always make sure that my cereal is closed up nice and tight. Anytime you have a movie that literally changes your life habits out of anxiety, you know you have a winner. I saw a web. There is a web in the barn. A web would indicate an arachnoid presence. Well, that's it, guys. That's my top five favorite killer spider movies. I, of course, would love to hear what your favorite killer spider movies are down in the comments. And right now, I have a poll going on my YouTube page where you can vote to see what type of movie I do for my next reference this film review. Until next time, guys. Takes the form of a giant spider and kills. That's right. That's exactly right. That's it. It's quite colorful.